The heart of severe weather season about to unleash an active pattern full of tornadoes, strong winds, hail, and the potential of flooding for much of the lower 48, the latest in today's video. Everybody, great to see you on the start of the week this Monday, May 12th. And yeah, folks, I think we're about to get in the peak of severe weather season, and we're going to see at least two weeks of active storms, including tornado potential for a lot of folks, including even today uh, into portions of the southeast. I'll break down that threat for you and also some exciting news in today's video. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Great way to stay up to date on the channel. And thank you to our channel members. Appreciate you folks and all you do for the channel. Again, really would not be possible without the folks on this list and also uh, just everyone that's a channel member, whether you're tier two, three or one, all of you are greatly appreciated. And uh, again, just would not be able to run this channel without you uh, during times like this when we have this active weather. And it's just oh so important to get that word out. Now, some news in today's video, uh, exciting news. I'm going to go ahead and launch on the channel today. I think this afternoon is live storm chasing. So I've been working on this for uh, a while now. I've been thinking about it for even longer than that, but uh, I am planning on starting uh, live storm chasing on this channel, likely today in the upstate of South Carolina. I'll be out and about. I'll be live on YouTube right here on GM Weather. So again, you're going to want to have the bell on so you'll be notified when that live stream starts. And uh, we'll be chasing this storm system and that tornado potential today, but not just today, not just the Carolinas. I'm going to try to push the boundaries with this a little bit and chase uh, quite a far way away from home, maybe even getting into the plains at some point this month and uh, could even have some special guests with me. Uh, we'll see, you know, the details on that, but expect that here, uh, here coming on the channel for really much of May and potentially even into June. Uh, I think it's a great time to give this a shot on the channel. So I would really appreciate your support, even if that's just watching it uh, or if it's donating to the channel. I did have to put a lot into this in terms of time and uh, monetary resources. So again, if you want to support me and my passion, I would really appreciate that. But again, you could also support by just watching. That is more than enough and uh, really does wonders for the channel. All right, folks, let's dive on into the forecast today because again, a lot to talk about uh, here with this very active pattern, including severe weather potential today. You can see this big upper level low just continuing to spin away. It's been hanging around for quite some time now, parked really right over Louisiana and Mississippi, the heart of it, and just pulling a lot of flow up out of the Gulf and the Atlantic. And these two are coming together to produce that potential of tornadoes today. Uh, in portions of South Carolina, Georgia, and even up into North Carolina would not surprise me as well. Uh, definitely something that we're going to need to watch in those states. Now, other than that, we're kind of quiet. We've got another storm system working into the Pacific Northwest. That one also uh, eventually going to eject through the plains here and could produce severe weather. But I really think it's later this week, Thursday, Friday, and then into next week that things really ramp up and we see much larger areas with much higher severe weather potential uh, beginning to unfold as we get to the middle and second half of May. That looks to be a very real possibility and even a likelihood as we keep going ahead into time. Now, you can see this on radar as well. I'm recording this right around 11 a.m. So this is what radar looks like right now. It's obviously going to look a little different when you're watching this, but either way, you can see the storm system spinning away here over the Mid-South and just pulling up plumes of moisture out of the Gulf. Now, it's these little individual kind of cells we need to watch, especially into western South Carolina, eastern Georgia, and into Western North Carolina this evening and this afternoon and even into the overnight. In fact, I can almost guarantee you from some of the damage pictures I've seen, I believe we had a spin-up tornado overnight last night or really early this morning in Aiken, South Carolina, I believe uh, was where some of that uh, footage was out of. So the atmosphere is primed. We've got a lot of wind shear. We've got a lot of surface instability and it does not take much of those two in this part of the world uh, to get some of these quick, brief spin-up tornadoes. Even if they're not your EF4s or 5s, uh, these EF0s and 1s could still produce damage and take down structures, especially if you know, you're surrounded by trees or in a mobile home. So days like this are just as important uh, for folks out in this part of the country as it is for folks out in Oklahoma or Kansas when you have your big severe weather days. Um, you know, All tornadoes matter, I guess is kind of the way to put it. So uh, with all that, you can see the threat from the Storm Prediction Center today. Uh, yeah, we've got that marginal risk. That's a 2% chance of a tornado here within a 25-mile radius for pretty highly populated areas. The entire east coast of Florida, all the way up towards Savannah, Charleston, Columbia, Augusta, and then up through the western Carolinas, Greenville, Anderson, Spartanburg, uh, even Oconee, Pickens County, and up into uh, the Lake Toxaway region of North Carolina here into Transylvania County. We could see that potential for brief spin-up tornadoes. Uh, that even extends all the way out into the coastal plain of southeastern North Carolina and then the coast of South Carolina, including the Grand Strand, then up there towards Southport. So uh, again, something we need to watch today. It's not uh, off the charts by any means, but I do expect a couple brief spin-ups uh, given the setup that we're going to talk about here coming up in just a moment. 
And with that said, let's go ahead and slide on over and take a look at some model data. All right, this time is out for you. Time above my head in Eastern Standard Time. This is the latest run of our high resolution rapid refresh model. I think doing a good job of timing this out for us and showing that potential uh, for stormy weather. So we'll kind of move it ahead into time here. We'll get this right out to about pause it here 3 p.m. this afternoon. You can see just a shield of rain up into Virginia, West Virginia, and through much of North Carolina, including the triad, the triangle, uh, and kind of areas in between. I think up that way, less of a tornado threat today. You're really lacking in stability, but heavy rain and the potential for flooding could be something we need to watch up into that region. Now, the tornado threat's gonna be a little bit higher, closer to the surface low, and where you can see we've got a couple of dry slots working into the upstate of South Carolina, Again, really just the entire western half of South Carolina, including the coastal plain out towards Wilmington and then back down into Georgia and the east coast of Florida. A little bit more wind shear and a little bit more instability that way. That's where we'll need to watch for that storm chase potential this afternoon and the tornadic potential. I'll also tell you, this is the kind of setup you're probably not going to get a warning from the National Weather Service. It's not going to be their fault by any means. Uh, these are just uh, the way that these tornadoes form. It's right at the surface, kind of under the radar beam height, so it's hard to pick it up. Also, oftentimes it only lasts between radar scans. Uh, so you're going to have to be you know, keeping an eye to the sky here. Really, anytime it's raining, uh, it's probably a good idea to stay indoors today uh, just to avoid any potential uh, problems here with uh, a relatively uh, juiced up atmosphere into this afternoon and evening. Again, that's 3 p.m. Keep it going ahead into time, though. I think the threat continues into the evening. Here's 9 p.m. Notice a, ni a pretty nasty line of storms working into South Carolina from Georgia. Again, we're going to have little areas of rotation in this even into the overnight. Very moist and unstable surface. Uh, likely to continue uh, that tornadic potential even into the overnight hours uh, as we continue ahead on. So that's 9 p.m. Now we get deeper into the overnight. Again, still cannot rule out a brief tornado. Like I said, we had one early this morning. That's about as low of an instability time frame as you can get. So uh, even into the overnight, in fact, we could also up some of that storm relative velocity sometimes at nighttime. Uh, we kind of get a bit of a nocturnal low-level jet. It's more common in the plains, but you can get kind of a baby version of it here even into the Carolinas sometimes. Uh, so we'll need to watch out for that. Waking up tomorrow morning on Tuesday, a lot of the rain now moving up to the north and east and into the mid-Atlantic, a real soaker tomorrow morning from D.C., Baltimore, really much of northern Virginia up into Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, uh, into the Tidewater and the Delmarva. Tomorrow afternoon, another day of a couple storms tried to develop uh, into the Raleigh area, really just, again, kind of in the warm sector on the right-hand side of our system here. Anyone in this pink circle can have the chance of a rumble of thunder, a quick storm tomorrow, uh, lower tornado threat tomorrow than today, but non-zero. So we could even see a brief spin up tomorrow, again, where we have that uh, higher end instability and storm relative velocity there, again, kind of lined up in that pink circle on your map for your Tuesday. Keep it going ahead into time here throughout Tuesday afternoon and evening into the overnight. More showers, more storms, but luckily, by the time we're waking up here Wednesday morning, this upper level low finally dying off a little bit, uh, but uh, you know, still bringing some pesky showers. So with that said, let's swing on over now. Let's take a look at some model analysis for today, and let me show you why the tornado threat is a little bit higher than maybe you might think. All right, this is the energy helicity index from the NAM model for today. Again, this is also a new model run. We'll move it out ahead into time right about here. Uh, this is this afternoon. So the energy helicity index is kind of a watered down version of the significant tornado parameter index. I think a lot of you are probably familiar with. Uh, it's a scale that, you know, you get up towards about 10 or zero to 10 is normally the values that you see on that scale, 10 being the worst of the days and zero being you know, no tornado threat. Well, this is similar, uh, but this tries to account for non-supercellular tornadoes. So kind of like today, there's going to be what I like to call super showers, uh, basically rotating showers. There's not going to be a lot of thunder, not a lot of lightning. Uh, but still that potential to rotate. And anytime you get above a value of about one, that's when things become a little bit more concerning for tornadoes. And you'll notice today, we're getting up to one, one and a half, some isolated spots, even clipping two today into Western South Carolina, specifically uh, kind of along the Georgia line here. So up the Savannah River Valley, uh, from the western Midlands all the way up into the western portions of the Carolinas, Pickens, Oconee, Anderson County, up into even western North Carolina. You can see those ingredients hang around during the overnight. It's just wave after wave of these ingredients. This is late into the overnight, folks. Now ingredients shifting east a little bit. Columbia over towards the PUD, maybe Charlotte, a quick spin up, not out of the question. And again, uh, this is not going to be an outbreak or anything like that. But uh, still, anybody could be on the table here if you're kind of shaded into the darker colors for that potential of a rotating shower tonight that could produce a quick spin up tornado. So again, just have the weather radio on if it's a super strong one that we can pick up on radar. Uh, obviously, the NWS will warn it. 
and uh, I'll let you know about it on social media, which you can also follow me on with the link below. You'll see uh, the link tree that will say, check out my socials and you'll see the Twitter X, um, Facebook, all the places. So definitely check that out, but um, keep on going here into tomorrow afternoon. Again, we could see the same ingredients shifting up North Virginia, West Virginia, uh, up to the triad and the triangle of North Carolina, maybe a couple brief spin-ups that way tomorrow for your Tuesday. And uh, check out the Outer Banks as well tomorrow. Really high ingredients here with a little bit of a sea breeze play, it looks like. So a sea breeze boundary basically uh, likely enhancing some of the wind shear in the atmosphere out that way would be my guess. Uh, is why we're seeing that enhancement. And then you can see by Wednesday afternoon, lower ingredients uh, over the Carolinas, but maybe another little piece of energy swings on through and we could bump things up once again. So you get the idea here. We're going to need to continue to watch that potential. I took a sounding today. This is from uh, the western portions of South Carolina up near the upstate. Uh, you can already see the possible hazard type the model immediately projects is TOR. That means tornado. Let's talk about why that is, though, because it's one thing for the model to say it, but let's use some human analysis here and kind of gauge what we're seeing. Now, the first thing I can tell you, LCL, I often joke, it's uh, below sea level, basically meaning the base of the clouds today are right on the ground just above it. So it's not going to take a lot to stretch uh, the vorticity from the cloud base down to the surface. Uh, that also increases instability whenever we have these low LCL days. You can see our Cape values. It might not feel very much uh, unstable outside. We haven't seen a lot of sun, but still getting up 1,500, 2,000 joules per kilogram. That's enough to definitely get uh, storms going and getting taller. What about wind shear? SRH values uh, mainly between 1 and 200 today. So if this were an actual tropical storm, this would be a lot higher, and today would have an even higher threat of tornadoes. This is more of an upper level kind of low hybrid tropical-ish system, if you will. I know it's a very meteorological way to describe it, but uh, because it's not a full-blown surface low pressure, we've got lower storm relative velocity. It's a little bit less wind shear, but I'll tell you, these values are still more than enough, and if you get some sort of boundary play to set up, uh, that easily could produce a couple reef to spin up tornadoes. You can see, uh, again, the energy helicity index up around two today. That's high enough absolutely to produce a couple tornadoes. Another thing here is the three cape. That is the, uh, excuse me, the instability rather. What I was about to say, uh, right at the surface and quite high. It's above about the 60 threshold you would normally look for uh, for tornadoes with these kind of super shower setups. So definitely a sounding today that I think would uh, likely produce at least a couple brief spin-ups. Again, they're going to be hard to detect and may not even be warned, but I think they're likely to happen. All right, let's swing on over now. Let's take a look at uh, the week ahead and even the week after that and give you the latest on that severe weather potential into the end of May. All right, the upper level map for the week ahead, and you're going to see kind of how this unfolds. Again, this is today. We've got this big ridge up into the north trapping this upper level low. It's been hanging around. That's why it feels like the old Forrest Gump scene. You know, it's been raining for however long in the southeast. Well, luckily, the good news is we're going to get kind of a kicking mechanism, as we call it, uh, in meteorology. That's this piece of blue. It's going to come in and kick everything out of here and kind of give us a new fresh pattern. Now, fortunately, it's not a pattern you really want to see. This is going to be a strong piece of energy and low pressure. Check it out by Thursday. Yeah, that's a lot of blue over the northern plains. Blue in the northern plains in May. That's a recipe for strong to severe storms. Again, we've just got an incredible amount of difluence here. Uh, which is kind of in this circled area. It's basically air separating above our head, creating a vacuum at the surface upwards. And that is oftentimes what helps to create these supercellular events. And uh, I think is going to definitely aid in deep convection uh, by the second half of this work week. Now you see that hangs around, uh, gets quite strong. That could bring severe weather for our Thursday and our Friday, potentially even into Saturday. Then we're not done yet. Another big trough out west. This is by next week. So about seven, 10 days from now, we're going to keep the train of severe weather rolling eastbound. I think it's very likely to produce uh, an abundance of severe weather, really the middle of this week onward. And we'll get little breaks in between. But generally speaking, uh, the pattern is going to be conducive for severe weather. You can see it on the European model quite well here. Uh, we'll time this out. This is by, uh, we'll kind of move ahead to Tuesday, and then this is for your Wednesday afternoon. You can see, excuse me, you can still see rather, a couple showers and storms hanging around the Mid-Atlantic, the Northeast, and the Southeast. Check out the Northern Plains, a new storm system getting going and bringing uh, active weather, including the potential for severe weather. By Thursday, uh, this is Thursday afternoon, you can see strong surface low pressure, the potential for kind of a line of strong to severe storms by Thursday afternoon, all the way up into Iowa, Minnesota, 
uh, over towards Wisconsin, maybe even down into Illinois, depending on if the cap holds or not. And we'll talk about that as we get a little bit closer into time. Uh, it's the first big storm. And then notice, though, by Friday, uh, the storm kind of leaves a trail of potential severe weather well down south into the Tennessee, the Ohio Valley, potentially back into the Carolinas, back into Oklahoma and through the Ozarks. Um, so Friday could be another day of active severe weather with this very strong surface load now pulling up at that point into Canada. Uh, and you can just see the waves of storms just to the south of it here through the Tennessee Valley into the Carolinas. That could continue into Saturday, potential severe weather. Uh, Saturday looks like more of a northeast mid-Atlantic type day, at least right now. And then we do it all again. Another big storm system by early next week out into the plains. Again, bringing that potential for severe weather. Final thing I'll show you, the European ensembles, or not the final thing total, but the final thing for this segment. Uh, this is uh, kind of them taking all these ingredients for severe weather, putting them together and telling us, well, what are the odds we're going to see strong to severe storms? Today, yeah, the Euro ensembles are all over that threat. Northeast Georgia and Western South Carolina have been telling you about. Uh, looks to be quite real here on the ensembles. Keep it going ahead into time. Uh, again, uh, this still could see severe weather into the Mid-Atlantic the next couple of days, hanging around the Southeast. But by the time we get to Thursday, you can see a bit of an increase in ingredients through Minnesota, Iowa. Not off the charts. Again, there's a couple ingredients we still need to see if they're going to be in place or not for this to potentially become more of an outbreak. Uh, again, we'll continue watching models over the next couple of days. But then notice we get just this big area of severe weather ingredients. This is Friday afternoon and evening. Yeah, check it out. The entire Tennessee Valley from uh, Oklahoma all the way into the Western Carolinas running that threat of strong to severe storms by the Friday and Saturday time frame of this week. Keeps on going, hangs into the weekend, and then next week another blow up of ingredients here into Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, hangs around into the plains and then tries again to push east. So you get the idea, an active stretch of severe weather on the way. All right, let's take a look at a couple more maps and then I'll let you go here uh, on this Monday. Well, I'm not the only one seeing these ingredients for severe weather on the models. The Storm Prediction Center, the folks there in Norman, the experts see it as well. Here's their day four threat. This is for Thursday. Uh, they've got a threat potential from Euclid, Green Bay, all the way into Kenosha, Milwaukee, Chicago, uh, all of Indiana, much of southeastern Michigan, including Lansing, over towards South Bend, back up towards Grand Rapids, and then stretching all the way down towards St. Louis, Cape Girardeau, and then the Ohio River from Evansville, Louisville, up to Cincinnati, and even into western portions of Ohio there. That's for Thursday. You bring it into Friday. Yeah, we're not done yet. They're kind of also seeing that area to the south. Here's Friday, Jonesboro, Batesville, Memphis, Jackson, up towards Nashville, Clarksville, over towards Mayfield, Paducah, Boiling Green, and then out towards Cape Girardeau, and even the, kind of near the Farmington area there of the um, great state of Missouri. Sorry, I had to think about what state I was looking at there. Um, so you get the idea. We're going to have days and days of potential severe weather, and I expect this to expand and um, we'll likely get higher confidence in what exactly is going to happen as we get a little bit closer. But you get the idea, active weather with severe storms likely out of this pattern, including some heavy rainfall. We'll take a look at that. Again, the next uh, couple of days is going to feature plenty of rain here over Virginia, North Carolina, uh, the mountains of South Carolina as well, up into Northeast Georgia. We've already had plenty. We're going to get more. So flooding could become a concern. Definitely let me know if you're seeing any of that here in the Mid-Atlantic, but definitely a real soaker, although we could use it. We had a very dry spring. Spring. Sucks to get it all at once here, but uh, is what it is. And then you could see higher rainfall potential as well back up into the northern plains as that next storm system works through. Then I think by next week out here towards Oklahoma, Texas, uh, Arkansas, Missouri also going up their rainfall chances as a potential active pattern once again sets in. Alrighty, folks, that's all I've got for you on this Monday. Um, I'll be back tomorrow with a video. And uh, again, definitely hang around for the potential of a live stream tonight. Um, on YouTube, obviously here on the channel with the potential of storm chasing. So uh, excited about that, excited to launch that on the channel. I think today is a great way to test it out, see how it goes, and then potentially down the road, chasing even bigger events coming up here on the horizon. Uh, so you'll definitely, again, want to have the bell hit for notifications. All right, y'all have a great one. Stay safe out there. and I'll see you all tonight.